Secret? What secret? I don't think the Blue Zones live that long, really. I mean, just because they live six to eight years longer than Americans, big deal. Six mm -hmm. to eight years longer than Americans. They're still doing a lot wrong in the Blue Zones. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We will discover transformative health tips from Dr. Joel Foreman, a leading physician and nutrition expert renowned for his research on longevity, wellness, and stem cell regeneration. In this video, you'll learn about his nutritarian approach, which combines nutrition, moderate caloric restriction, and fasting to support health, extend lifespan, and boost stem cell activity. Plus, stay tuned until the end for Dr. Foreman's amazingly easy to apply stem cell regeneration tips that could revolutionize your approach to aging. Dr. Foreman's insights include how this approach enhances stem cell regeneration, a key to repairing tissues and slowing aging. He also covers the role of cholesterol management and raw foods in protecting and nourishing your stem cells, making healthy eating both effective and delicious. As a passionate advocate for lifestyle medicine, Dr. Foreman emphasizes addressing disease at its root through sustainable changes. His best-selling books, including cookbooks, make it easy to incorporate these principles into your life. At the end of the video, Dr. Foreman shares practical tips for stem cell regeneration, offering an exciting addition to his longevity strategies. Join us to learn how to optimize your health and enjoy a vibrant, longer life with Dr. Joel Foreman's expert guidance. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Americans died, you know, around 80, let's say 78. Males, 78. Females are like 81. And then blue zones are like 84 to 86. Mm -hmm. You know, even most people in the blue zones don't even average 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my practice over the last 35 years, most of the people that have adopted a nutritarian diet who are very old have been, have been living past 95. Wow. Even... You know, even people who had heart disease in their younger life. So, you know, I think that I'm saying that, imagine if you lived healthy from a young age, mm -hmm. why shouldn't you push 95, I'm saying 97 to 107 is more like, or 95 to 105. And we could narrow the bell-shaped curve. What I mean by that is that, you know how we have such a wide bell. Some people die at 60, some people live to be 95, but it's scattered all over the place. And such a lot of luck with your luck, whether you're going to survive or get cancer or get a, a stroke or whether you, it's all over the place. You said luck, it's a crapshoot. Mm -hmm. But the deer in the woods doesn't have a crapshoot. They all live within a few years of each other. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And when you, when humans lived consistently healthfully, we shouldn't have such a wide bell. We should all be living in genetics would play a much smaller role. We should all be living passing 95. My mother, who didn't even eat healthy most of her life, and just now she's here at the retreat, of course, eating healthfully. But she's um, self, you know, she's taking care of herself, drives, does everything, and she's over 95 now. Well, you know, well, imagine well. if she really took care of herself. I mean, yeah. she she didn't, but I had an influence on her, on her, obviously, and more as she got older, but at least that, but in any case, um, even those who don't even take good care of themselves when they're young, the body is so resilient and we're such a miraculous self-healing machine that changing to a super healthy diet later on still can have surprisingly effective effects at extending human lifespan mm -hmm. and even cancer so i'm um i'm not saying that you it's a hundred percent um you know guarantee but i'm saying that we literally can wipe out the, and then by the way the leading cause of death in the united states and adults people know is heart attacks and strokes and we could wipe out certainly you know 90 probably eight percent of that mm -hmm. heart attacks and strokes we could, that's just easy to wipe out Mm -hmm. Even if you do, even if a dietary change is done after the age of 60, still can wipe out heart attack, stroke, death. So, so we really have tremendous power with this lifestyle medicine thing, with this nutritionally excellence thing, what I call a nutritarian diet. Of It's really a diet of nutritional excellence designed to idealize human nutrition. And I'm saying here that the ideal diet to promote longevity and prevent disease is also therapeutically effective to reverse disease. Mm -hmm. So people's chest pains go away, their diabetes goes away, their high blood pressure goes away, their psoriasis goes away, their lupus goes away, their asthma goes away, their, their headaches go away. They get better mm -hmm. because they eat so healthfully. 
Yeah. I have a person here now whose psoriasis is melting away, but so many people recovered from asthma. And about 75% of, out of the people that come to my retreat here, I've been noticing that 75% of them get rid of their type 2 diabetes within six weeks. Mm -hmm. And about 90% within six months. Yeah. So it really, and then blood pressure too. They're off their blood pressure medications like 75% within six weeks. It's, it doesn't take that long. They've been eating healthy, unhealthy for decades, and all of a sudden they eat healthy for a couple of months and they don't have high blood pressure and diabetes anymore. Towards the end of this video is the doctor's amazingly easy to apply stem cell regeneration tip. Now, let's listen to the doctor's response to a question about the importance of raw foods. Numerous reasons. Number one is that lettuce is the richest source of sulfoquinivose, which is the primary fuel for the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut that make that thicken your biofilm with healthy gram positives. Mm. Number one. Lettuce also is low in oxalic acid, which all the calcium and magnesium and the, the minerals become readily absorbable as compared to spinach, which is high in minerals, but has a lot of phytic acid which, and oxalic acid, which mm -hmm. doesn't allow them to be absorbed as readily. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. issue is in raw foods is that raw onion has an enzyme called allianase, which forms more organosulfide compounds when you chew it raw or eat it just partially cooked because the allanase enzyme gets deactivated. You know, when you cut an onion, it makes your eyes tear, forming sulfenic acid. Well, that formation of the sulfenic acid is also forming major powerful anti-inflammatory and, and, and endothelial favorable compounds. The same thing with a myrosinase enzyme in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli or kale or collards or bok choy and arugula. You put a little arugula on your salad, a little cabbage on your salad and chew it really well. Then the enzymes are fully intact and you form, as you chew and crush the cell wall, you form the chemical reaction in your mouth to form the ITCs, the isothiocyanates, with such a powerful effect in preventing cancer that activate the NRF2 transcription proteins that stabilize DNA and repair cellular machinery. So we're talking here about um, we are dependent on these green level, these green vegetable derived nutrients and our immune system is heightened per degree of protection when we get exposure to them. And if you cook some of these foods a little bit, like cabbage or broccoli, where you heat it a little bit, you still get the benefit. It's just when you start to cook it too much that you can start to deactivate all those enzymes. And also chewing the raw vegetables in your mouth um, with the saliva and with the bacteria between the teeth, you also form more nitric oxide and other beneficial anti-inflammatory compounds as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different reasons we can keep going into, but it's better to have this mix of raw and cooked. Mm -hmm. And and even the cook should be mostly water-based cooking methods like walking or blanching or steaming and not things that are overcooked, not barbecuing and heavily baking and browning and darkening and blackening foods and making mm -hmm. them crispy and hard. And, you know, it should be things that are moist where it doesn't damage the food. And for a lot of these um, nutrients, if you half cook it it's still very bad you still get a lot of the nutrients you would get see broccoli is too overcooked you don't get much nutrients you, you lose some nutrients raw you get a good nutrient but if you just half cook it like walk it so it's like half cooked you get a tremendous amount of nutrient absorption from partially cooked so mm -hmm. that's also very good to be partially cooked listen to dr fumman get excited about some of the foods in a nutritarian diet i made a healthy fig newton it was like made a a fresh figs from my garden we made banana ice cream with a you know made with fresh bananas and macadamia nuts and vanilla bean powder and a little splash of plant milk it was like melted in your mouth and without that heavy degree of sweetness and the chemical taste you get from regular ice cream you know that what i'm saying is we make a thai curry sauce we make a we're making food taste delicious we're mm -hmm. not giving up anything with discipline mm -hmm. we're just smart it's mm -hmm. just you know, smart nutrition and yeah. you enjoy the food more not less because now our intellectual self is comfortable with our emotional self. Mm -hmm. So we're getting pleasure and we're feeling good about ourselves and we're intellectually satisfied and we're feeling that we're healthy and we're feeling better too. We're sleeping better. You know, if I go eat on something unhealthy, I'm up half the night drinking water all night long and then running to the bathroom the whole night. I can't even sleep when I eat unhealthy. And my mm -hmm. stomach, you know, I eat, I feel better. And like you said, you have energy, you could, and you, you gives you emotional and physical well, feeling of physical and well being too. Steam broccoli with mm -hmm. roasted garlic and just a little touch of spray of olive oil when it's cooked it gets like it's like melts in your mouth like a and then what you know, my favorite foods is artichokes like steamed mm -hmm. artichoke hearts 
mm-hmm. just plain with nothing on it. You know, oh, it's yeah. like, wow, this was like, it's like a delicacy of the gods. Mm-hmm. Much better than eating like escargot or caviar. Mm-hmm. Have a steamed artichoke card. It's mm-hmm. the greatest thing. People don't yeah. even know how good natural. And what about a fresh fig that you picked off your own tree that ripened on the tree? Or, fresh, you know, growing some of your own food, like tomatoes. And you know what a, a dry farm tomato is where you don't water the plant in the last month before you pick it? Mm-hmm. As the tomatoes ripen, you purposely don't water to increase the sweetness of the tomato. But the point I'm making is we're making, there's so many incredibly delicious natural foods that you, that that are just um, delightful. Yeah. It's even more um, emotionally satisfying when you grow some of it yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and you made, it, you made it yourself their own food. What do you say to people who tell you that they don't want to give up the enjoyment of eating? We're not giving up enjoyment of eating. The whole thing is ridiculous is these people think that, oh, I couldn't do that. And I, I don't, I'd rather be dead if I had to eat carrot sticks and celery. You know, right. it's, it's just their food addiction talking. They yeah. don't really, they don't just, they don't know enough yet. Mm-hmm. Even the taste buds get stronger when mm-hmm. your health gets better and you stop um, over, you know, over stimulating the bliss point with so much sugar and salt mm-hmm. and spice and you, your taste buds improve so that what you're eating, you adapt to what you're eating. You like it better. Coming up shortly is the doctor's incredible stem cells regeneration tip. Now, here's how Dr. Foreman responds when asked for tips on how to persuade people to adopt a nutritarian diet. My tip is that you can't persuade them in a short period of time in a medical visit. It's too short a period of time. Mm-hmm. They need a lot of education. And as a medical doctor, I think most, and I, and, I, and I advise doctors who practice lifestyle medicine and nutrition of practice that they, when people join their medical practice, they should insist they come to group visits to be part of the practice. Mm-hmm. They have to attend group visits at least once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. And, they, and that where the doctor is talking to the group for an hour, an hour and a half. And the, the, doc, and the, and the patient pays the copay for the group visit. You bill out of this legal, it's, it's a legitimate billing expense for a group visit. So the doctor gets paid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the, the chronicity of the education over and over again and reviewing the studies and the findings and the risk of death, then people will eventually make the change. But you mm-hmm. can't afford a 15 minute medical visit, make a few suggestions and expect people to change. Yeah. You know, give people a tremendous amount of information. Here is how the doctor prods other doctors to move to a nutritarian diet. And of course, obviously, you know, I say to people, I'm speaking to a group of 500 to 1,000 medical doctors in an auditorium. Mm-hmm. And I'll say to them, raise your hand if you've been struck by a bullet or stabbed by a knife or anybody in your family has had that happen to. And like one person will raise their hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, okay, raise your hand if you had a heart attack or a stroke or a cancer diagnosis in your family. Mm-hmm. And everybody's hand goes up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I say, and you, do you want to stay living in that dangerous neighborhood? Why would you still live and under the risk that everybody else has when you're seeing it's, the prevalence of risk is so high? Then why wouldn't you do something to mitigate that risk? Mm-hmm. It's insane, and it shows the power of food addiction and that you are not in control of your life. Your food is controlling you. You've lost the keys to the bank, and you've lost the ability of your brain to make the right decisions on your own behalf. Mm-hmm. Why would a person put self-destructive substances in their mouth? They're the person controlling their health destiny. Mm-hmm. So, that we, so we train people. And I may, I'm saying with enough information and with the right type of motivational information and scientific information and training on mindfulness and, and, how to be, and happiness training, how to be happy, then people can succeed and they do want to make the change. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. takes a tremendous amount of point of contact with individuals to be able to change their fixed and addictive mindset to mm-hmm. want to make that change. And mm-hmm. that's why people come into my retreat for like two or three months. And we make it so the time they leave here, they can go back in the real world and, and be happy and consistent with staying with the program and continue with the benefits where they on their own, they couldn't do it. Or a week on the way to a week a getaway, they can't do it either. It's not enough time for, the, for their brain to reach, reset itself. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying everybody has to come to my retreat. They can instead read books, watch videos, join member centers, you know, do, you know, join like my member center where we're supporting each other, like you're doing. People could, you know, listen to your podcast videos. They can get more information. They could work, but they have to work for that. Mm-hmm. They have to put effort into it. Mm-hmm. So first we have to convince them that this effort is worth, worth it. 
Mm -hmm. Dr. Foreman's final response about getting people to change to a nutritarian diet. Um, yes, I mean, we have to deal with a person on multiple levels and people don't really, um, are not going to accept your desire to be useful to them and change their behavior mm -hmm. if they don't feel you care about them and are interested in them as a person. So if you show a person love and care and unconditional love, then if somebody's, you know, is, is some friend of yours or some family members, they're not going to listen to you tell them how to live and eat mm -hmm. unless they're first convinced you really care about them. Mm -hmm. Then they'll be more likely to listen. They know it's coming from your heart of goodwill. So mm -hmm. that has to be established first of all. And what I'm saying here is that when people can't, they don't succeed on a healthy diet because it makes them feel socially uncomfortable because they're so used to getting their self-esteem, externally generated self-esteem, which is like junk food. You want other people to approve of you. You want other people to like you. It's like posting on Instagram, how, how you look, how much money you make, your, your fancy closing, your, whatever, whatever it is you want, you're trying to impress on people. And you just want people to be, you just want to be liked. Mm -hmm. And when you eat differently than other people, they're going to make you feel uncomfortable and you're going to feel like you're losing their approval. And that loss of approval, approval and social connect, loss of social connection is going to interfere with your ability to stay taking good care of your health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we try to build people have a healthier outlook on life by building internally generated self-esteem, mm -hmm. not dependent on externally generated self-esteem. So they feel good about themselves because when the person says to them, oh, well, if I had to eat that way, I'd rather be dead. Who wants to live on celery the rest of your life? Then, or says anything to you that could be somewhat interpreted as being argumentative, accusatory, nasty, or anything. We're no longer trying to protect our ego or, or defend ourselves. We're just thinking, this is an opportunity for me to have creative goodwill for this person, mm -hmm. to use my intelligence and creativity to see if I can have a good effect in their life. And the chance of having a good effect in their life may be one in a hundred. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you attempted to do that is how you build internally generated self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Because we appreciate the world outside ourselves. We have more gratitude. We have more respect and appreciation for nature and for and, and our connection for other people and our and our and our legacy to have a good effect on others, mm -hmm. and therefore, we're, if, if you're, we're not dependent if a person is liking us, or we don't have to impress them by eating the, by drinking socially or by eating their cheesecake that they made for us on our birthday, mm -hmm. you know, we could show them we care about them in different ways than just trying to self destruct our own habit, our own life, in order to impress another person. Mm -hmm. Our behavior is not needed to impress another person. That's yeah. let's so that type of um, we have a different type of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. We're mindfully respectful of the beauty, the nature and beauty in natural foods, mm -hmm. almost as if we can see into the foods with the structure and function and how our relationship to that food are dependent on each other. So mm -hmm. we have an appreciation for food more. We're foodies. Mm -hmm. We start to develop an appreciation more for the natural world and we start to be able to like things outside of ourselves. Remember the drug addict, the mm -hmm. food addict, the more you're an addict, the more you are selfishly and narcissistically consumed with your own addictive needs, with your own dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. And when you're eating so unhealthfully, it changes the brain's structure and function and neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. And you and it leads to making poor choices and the lack of ability to make decisions based on logic and reason. Mm -hmm. You become easily confused and more affected by conspiracy theories and you be led in the wrong path. And we're, we're seeing, I wrote a book about this called Fast Food Genocide, yeah. describing how people became more violent due to niacin deficiency in, in from Pellagra after the Civil War, leading to lynching of blacks and more violence in the South. And I'm suggesting that we're seeing this today. We're seeing more violence, less ability to care for and relate to other people more a feeling of separateness and against other people and and conflict and egos and narcissism and you know so we're, we're seeing more of that and part of that problem is due to the, the nutritionally deficient brain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so all of this is married together the good mm -hmm. nutrition a better way of seeing the world having genuine goodwill for other people, mm -hmm. it leads to a more stable and happier and peaceful life and a healthier life. Mm -hmm.
What's the secret? Here's the doctor tells us about the timing of food eating and fasting as he reveals the secret to increasing stem cell regeneration. Um, well, the first and most important thing is that our body heals itself and the anti-aging phenomenon and disease reversal benefits we get from dieting occurs when we're sleeping at night. Most repair occurs during sleep when we're not digesting food. Mm -hmm. It's the combination of being still and resting while we're not digesting that enhances cellular repair. So by eating late at night and a heavy meat dinner late at night, and we're digesting calories half the night while we're sleeping, inhibits or promotes aging mm -hmm. and inhibits health, cell repair. Mm -hmm. So time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting, I like to look at it as the most valuable part of that is eat means eat dinner earlier and don't overeat at dinner, almost so you could be a touch hungry at bedtime or certainly that you make sure that when you go to sleep at night, you don't feel like you have to have a full stomach anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, make you, if you can't eat light at night, make you a bigger meal for lunch if you have to. But, mm -hmm. you know, eat lightly at night or eat earlier at night. We generally serve dinner here around five o'clock. And even sometimes I overeat at night. I'm overeating and it's going to taste so good. And then I go to bed at night. I'm still feeling like I over, I said, oh, shoot, I overate. I should be, I should really not, I should have finished digesting by now. I got to remember to eat. I got to try to eat less for dinner and eat or eat earlier. You know what I mean? So you, if you overeat, it takes longer to digest it. So you can increase the hours of digestion by just putting too much food in your stomach at one time. You know, mm -hmm. it's why people, they, they eat dinner and they're not even hungry for dinner because they eat too much at lunch. If you eat too much at breakfast, you're not going to be hungry. If you want to eat three meals a day, you have to not overeat so you can get hungry in time and have your stomach be totally empty and feel like eating the next meal. But particularly at dinner time is critically important. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, fasting and intermittent fasting has benefits for longevity, just like caloric restriction does. But I generally don't recommend it too much because I'm dealing with overweight food addicts so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by and if they're still overweight, we're trying to fast weight off them instead of learning them learning how to live the lifestyle. It makes them more emotionally obsessed about food. It actually triggers addictive behaviors. It doesn't help it. And even though you might have accelerated the weight loss a little bit, they're going to get a slow metabolic rate that's extremely too slow after the fast, and they'll gain weight too readily. And they're not even going to want to stick with the program after the fast. So it more it's, it complicates things and makes too high a risk of weight yo-yoing. Mm -hmm. and lack and less chance they're going to stay consistent on the program long term so i don't recommend that but right now i'm fasting a person because she's eating healthfully and her psoriasis was so bad and so itchy that i just felt i wanted to clear the psoriasis faster so she could be more comfortable and she wasn't that overweight anyway so i started her after about a couple of months of eating right and her psoriasis wasn't yet going away yet so I started her on a fast this week, and immediately it's clearing up her psoriasis. And so um, so there are so I'm sometimes going to fast people as a therapeutic modality. Like I particularly use it with asthmatics, because once they eat healthfully for six months, and I want to slowly wean them off their steroids, I want to make sure as they come off their steroids, they don't flare up again and have an attack. So I start them on a brief fast to lower the, to reduce the propensity for an immune hyperactivation. So their asthma is clear and there's no reaction while they're staying off the steroids for the next, you know, so they're going to fast a week or two and then they're going to go back to eating and I can make sure they're never going to have another asthma attack the rest of their life. You know, so I can use it in my ars my tool bag of arsenal of, of natural remedies, but I, but I don't want to overuse it either. You know what I mean? Here is the doctor's message about the effects of moderate caloric restriction on diet on cholesterol. If you keep your LDL, particularly your oxidized LDL, very favorable to high antioxidant diet, keep your body fat down, your weight down, don't overeat. And particularly, I'm saying don't eat too many calories because the excess calories can drive up LPA. Just keep, you, And over time, as you do this degree of moderate caloric restriction and it slows down your metabolism a little bit because you undershoot your basal metabolic needs your lpa lpa will improve a little bit and it, even if it's still in the abnormal range it'll be the low range of abnormal not the high range of abnormal we see improvements in lpa as okay. people adopt this program of moderate caloric restriction and then they um and then we see improvements as the so as IGF one and insulin and all these hormones go lower, 
we see improvements in LPA, LPA as well. But I agree with that. If we get everything right, it should be less of a concern or no concern. Next, watch the Dr. Joel Foreman Club playlist for more information on the nutritarian diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.